John with RipeWave Express for a head-to-head -head competition between Denon's latest AV receiver, the AVR X6800H, and Marantz's also latest receiver, the Cinema 30. Both of these have similar characteristics, but how do they compare for their sound quality? That is what we're trying to find out. And we're not only going to do it between these two models, but we're bringing in what's in our rack here, our long-term purchase, the Cinema 50, as well as the Emotiva RMC1. This video is the short version of what we post on our full channel, RipeWave Audio, but let's get right into this. This is a series that has been continuing on. And as we showed before, that the Cinema 30 and the Denon X6800H are equivalent as far as the tiers in the portfolios of each of the respective brands owned by the same company, Denon Marantz. But the Denon sells for $1,000 less. And do you really get $1,000 more of sound quality when you go to the Denon versus the Marantz? Of course, the Marantz has more premium finishes, the more metallic-like finish, the closer tolerances on that product, the heavier remote. These are all things that allude to the quality but ultimately it comes down to the sound experience that really makes the difference in our home theaters. So we'll take a look at that. These models sit underneath the flagships of these models. Now, of course, there's several tiers below that as we've shown in the past. Now, one test that we've done in addition is the startup time. And the startup times were respectable for the Cinema 30 as well as the Denon X6800H, so around 10 to 14 seconds, whether you're talking about from standby or cold boot, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. When I was measuring it, sometimes the cold boot was a couple seconds slower, but I think this is within the margin of error. So we're going to say they're just about the same. Certainly a big difference. We take a look at some of the other models, like the model price HTP1, while it will go from standby in 12 seconds, which is comparable the cold boot startup is 90 second, and this is something similar that we see with the Emotiva. Even the Sony is a one second startup from standby, but still 90 seconds from cold boot. So this is kind of a, doing a nice compromise here. Now, nothing beats the Pioneer, Onkyo, and Integra startup times between two and five seconds. So big differences on that. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that these are probably using a more embedded operating system versus something that's Linux based, more like, like a PC. To conduct our tests, we did listening tests and we did measured tests. And we did some comparisons between them, but to set up for them, rather than taking all our speakers and we have a 9.2.4 system here, which these units are capable of doing. Of course, the Cinema 50 can't do the front wides. But what doesn't even matter when we do this comparison, we're only going to listen in two channel mode. And we're going to first set up those front speakers as full range. We're not going to utilize our subwoofers. We're going to turn those off. We're going to simplify things right down. So the comparison is a little more easy to manage. And we don't have any other influences that I set the crossovers correctly or any other parameters. So full range on that. And it's important that, particularly on the Marantz and Denon models, that you go into the subwoofer output and make sure it's only set to uh, output LFE signals that are coming. That way, nothing that's destined for the front speakers will make its way to the subwoofer. So we did not set it to LFE plus main in our case, which would have directed some of the lower notes out to the subwoofer. So we take the subwoofer out of the equation entirely. The other thing that we did and we think is important is to turn off any room calibration correction system. So Odyssey and Direct Live were not applied in this. You know, this particular uh, screenshot that we're looking at, uh, it hadn't even run yet for the speaker press preset, so the, neither one of them active. But if you had run the calibration, make sure you turn that off before proceeding. We did our test setup with the microphone, the UMIC-1 into REW to take some measurements. And when we took these measurements, these are some of the things that we found. While these are showing different amplitudes, uh, that's just because I didn't perfectly level match 
these receivers and the one processor. But if you look at it, anything above really 20 hertz, and that's really what we're looking at here, because these Polk towers that we're using don't go below 20 hertz, and we don't have our subwoofers enabled. So we can ignore anything below 20 hertz, but the rest of the traces all look similar. And we did this first with stereo mode. All these units have three different modes for two channel. There's the stereo mode, which is the standard. Then there's direct mode. And, and then there's pure direct or reference mode as we deal with on the RMC1. So first we're looking at stereo mode here. As I said, no real distinguishing differences in the plots. And the same thing if we go to direct mode, the plots don't look much different. And when we go to pure direct mode, Again, they look the same. So what, what can we do to further analyze this thing to justify what we're hearing different uh, when we were listening? And we decided to use the distortion button that's part of REW. And when we click on that, we see this plot. And this is with stereo mode. And we're doing this all with near field measurements. In fact, the other traces were all near field. We want to take out all the effects of the room as well. We want to just listen as closely as possible. Looking at the distortion, there is a noticeable difference between the Emotiva RMC1 and what Denon and Marantz are doing. There's visibly more distortion with the Denon Marantz. The X6800 reports the most distortion. And the both models from Marantz have less, and they're very similar. I was very surprised that the Cinema 50 didn't have the most distortion and that the 6800 didn't fall somewhere in between. In fact, it even had slightly less distortion than the Cinema 30, and this was consistent for every time I measured it, and I really re-measured this several times to make sure I wasn't making an error here on, on the setup. This was even particularly more surprising as we find when we listen to these units side by side that the Cinema 50 doesn't sound as good as the 30. So it's surprising that it would have a little less distortion. And this was the same case whether we were in direct mode or pure direct or reference mode. And no really difference here, the same order in which we're seeing the amount of distortion. Now the part that you're all been waiting for is how this showed on our rich versus thin confined versus spacious 2D plot that we've been maintaining as we've gone through the 12 models up to date. Now we have 14 models all in this comparison. We started grouping these a little more clearly with these color codes with tier three being in kind of a yellow orange, tier two being in blue, and the first tier being in green. And we can see that from my listening tests that I feel that these latest receivers from Den and Marantz, finally bring those brands into the top tier with the other models, such as Monoprice, Arcam, Denon, Yamaha, and Anthem, as well as Emotiva. The Cinema 30, we kind of felt this was like in third place and the Denon in, in seventh place, but I will point out, really we're splitting hairs here. It's very difficult to really hear differences. I really had to put my ear up to the speaker and I looked from different parts of the room and compared. A lot of times I didn't even hear a difference. So I changed the album that I was listening to. And sometimes a lesser recording, something that's not recorded as well, you can actually hear the differences between these models with my ABC switch uh, being selected from one to, to the other. And this is how I came up with this real subjective uh, plot of how these sounded. And if I brought you into the room, I think you'd play some of the same tiers, but maybe play some in the bubbles a little different than I do, but that's okay. Now, one thing that I notice as well as, as you strip this down from the full, all the speakers going, with all the calibration going, the differences even become less, which means when you listen to with, with all the speakers going and with the calibration, these start to separate a little bit more. The Cinema 30 sounds that much more better than a 6800. And this is my opinion. Of course, it would be good to get your feedback on this as well. So what are your thoughts on our sound comparison between these models and how they fit into the 12 others that we've tested to date? That feedback would be useful to RipeWave Express. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Be sure to hit 
that bell notification so you're informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.